You know, Rita, I think it is fair to say that there hasn't been enough Megan in this book, so it is important we get back to the most important member of the royal family. Um, and it talks in this part about how she claims to have been ignored at the Queen's funeral. For the duration of the time in Britain, the Duke and Duchess were on the receiving end of snubs and brush-offs mm. at the state funeral, Camilla Kate and Sophie noticeably went out of their way to ignore Megan outside of Westminster Abbey. Well, the thing is, we've got some footage. Uh, and I hope you're watching the footage right now because it doesn't show that whatsoever. I'm shocked. I'm shocked such a truthful account of everything that's happened would, would have something false in it. This has shook me to my core, Paul. To I need my a core, moment. To my I need a minute. Now, you'll recall that what they call the Fab Four Walk. Mm. Uh, the, the first appearance of uh, William, Kate, Harry, Megan all together um, appearing and the public going, this was one of those moments nobody expected. I remember being in London at mm. the time and on air when it actually happened. And this was one of those moments to remember in that crazy week after the passing of the Queen. This is the book, page 206. Are you telling me there's... More than what I understood the moment to oh, mean. The depths here are mm. astonishing. Please. Essentially, he told William to swallow his pride and invite his brother and sister-in-law to join them when they greeted mourners and well-wishers in Windsor that day, said a palace source. William wasn't keen. This was his moment with the public, but the king put pressure on him. With around 40 minutes left before he planned to step out on Windsor Castle's long walk with Kate, William sent his first text message in months to Harry, suggesting it would be good if they came along too. The couple wanted to do what was right, but time was short. Megan, in sneakers with her hair pulled up, had only just come back from a walk. The couple's head of communications, Ashley Hanson, gave the couple a pep talk. It doesn't matter how little time you have. Just get out there and do it, oh. she told the couple. And with that, the Sussexes quickly got ready and made their way to the courtyard of Windsor Castle. Though they had seen William and Kate since their big exit, including at the Platinum Jubilee celebrations, this was the first time the couples had to, uh, had to actually talk as a foursome. The silence as they climbed into the same car, a decision made by Lee Thompson, William and Kate's press secretary, was very noticeable. Given the tension between the brothers and zero communication between Meghan and Kate, the 150-second car ride oh! to the long walk felt like two hours <laughs> yes. as they muddled through light, small talk. None of this is astonishing. Yeah. So what, you've only got 40 minutes to get ready for, what, a walk? Where yeah. you take some flowers from people and but, make small talk? But also, sort of, this, this is where, this is, the, again... This is where we get right into the detail, right, about who is the information source here, right? It's all obviously from Harry and Meghan's perspective and quite specifically into Meghan's perspective. But also, the way that the author tries to cover this up and tries to paint the picture that he wants you to eventually get, which is Meghan was just going for a walk because that's what fit and responsible people do. She just was wearing a pair of sneakers like normal people do. And then at a moment's notice, she had to glam up. But because of her awesomeness, she was able to, to, just, to glam she up. She only had 40 minutes to, to get ready for, for a walk. I mean, how much preparation, pep talking do you need to basically walk alongside your husband, speak to some mourners collect flowers, people have only got nice things to say to you, comforting things to say to you, and then uh, that's it. Well, funny you say that, because this book claims some people didn't say nice things to her. Oh, no, this this goes on. Mm. There's, there's more. Though her peering composed, sources said Megan, sources said Megan was extremely nervous about being in front of the crowds. By this point, the couple's rapidly declining popularity in the United Kingdom was an inarguable fact. Yeah. The level of vitriol. The thing in the book. <laughs> the level of vitriol aimed at Meghan in particular, whether online or in the newspapers, blah, was blah, worse blah, blah, than blah. ever. Armed royal protection officers were on high alert, wow. and so was she. Some supporters gathered in the crowd didn't hide their animus towards the Duchess. Of course, we would get stuck with her, moaned one woman within earshot of Meghan. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I want to know who that 
woman is, I want to buy her a beer. <laughs> Another was seen on camera grimacing after shaking the Duchess's hand while others refused to put their hand out. When I saw the videos of Meg, I could see she was doing her best to hold it together. She looked terrified, said one of her close friends. That's Megan. She's got her close friends. Yeah, correct. When a 14 also giving herself her own nickname. I'm not Megan, just to my friends, I'm Meg. Meg. When a 14-year-old fan stopped to chat with Megan, their hug choked the Duchess up. I just wanted to show her that she's welcome here and wanted to hug her oh. after everything that happened, said the teen. Oh. oh, dear me. Can we have a moment's silence for oh. Megan, please? But again, oh. remember the context. This is all after the Queen, an, an intergenerational beloved figure of almost 100 years of age and 80 years on the throne, right? There was very few people in England who, do, who remember anything but... Her as the monarch, right? Mm. The depth of that moment, she still is able to turn into herself. The, the recollections are still about herself. The emotions of the people... Nobody turned mm. up to Windsor, by the way, with an expectation of a public walk. Yeah. It's a surprise. So the idea that somebody sort of turned up in order to be nasty is not no. true. And, and if the harshest thing they can come up with is, of course, we would get stuck with her then you got off lightly Correct. because I can tell you, yes, there was animus towards Harry and Meghan, well-placed animus because they had put the Queen through hell in her final years. They had put the family through so much grief. And as we've discussed previously, one of the really ugly things about how they went about it is they threw out these allegations knowing full well Kate and uh, Will or the Queen wasn't going to sit down with Oprah and come back at them. There's it no was a response. free hit 100%. because they have to maintain a certain decorum. Because <laughs> it was. They were turning the royal family into the Jerry Springer show. Correct. God, that was a fun show. God, that was awesome. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Rest in peace. <laughs>